For Google, their Nexus line has always served as their way to lead manufacturers in the right direction of what an Android phone should be. And this is the first year that Google, in association with LG and Huawei, has released two different phones with the Nexus branding. Huawei's phone, the Nexus 6P, was granted the more premium of the two and most definitely deserves that title. That's not what I'm here to talk about today though. This is the Google Nexus 5X. It's Google's vision for the future of budget Android phones. Over the last couple of weeks, I've spent a lot of time with this phone and gotten to know the ins and outs, and overall, I've been very impressed. So without further ado, here's my full review of the Google Nexus 5X. <laughs> Let's talk about the build first. This thing feels great to hold, and I mean great. The soft touch materials that were in the Nexus 5 have made a comeback to my satisfaction. For being constructed of mostly plastic, the 5X feels very durable. There's almost no bend or flex on this device during use, which you tend to find in other budget phones. I went for their so-called carbon or black 5X, although there are quartz and ice colors as well. I really hope that LG didn't change the soft touch material at all on the quartz or ice versions to reduce scuffs or anything, because it feels so good. I think my Carbon 5X looks incredible. There's something about a phone that has a consistent color throughout that is just really appealing to me. The only other markings are the gray Nexus slash LG logo and the fingerprint ring on the back of the phone, but they're really subtle. And you might want to know, is the fingerprint scanner any good? Well the short answer is yes, if you use it right. When I first got the phone and programmed my finger into it, it worked half the time. Frustrated, I'd delete the first scan and tried again, but to no avail. So me, being as brilliant as I am, programmed the same finger in twice, focusing on two different areas. The first scan was the top of my index finger, and the second scan was the bottom of that same index finger. It has worked flawlessly ever since, and I've not looked back. Should Google have just required more scans of that same finger initially like Apple does with Touch ID? Yes, but I can't complain that much because it was a very easy fix. The I.O. and button placement on this phone is pretty good. There's nothing on the top except a microphone, the volume rocker and power button are on the right hand side, the SIM tray is on the left, and the charging port, headphone jack, and second microphone are on the bottom. The layout worked well for me, but I did occasionally find myself pressing the power button or volume rocker when I meant to press the other of the two. This is a pretty easy fix like Motorola did with the Moto X Pure Edition by putting a texture on the power button so you can tell which button is which without actually having to look at the button, so maybe next time around they will get that right. But I do want to applaud Google and LG for using a USB Type-C connection because it is the future and it is so much better than micro USB. Next up, the screen. The 5X is sporting a 1920 by 1080 LCD display with 423 pixels per inch and a display capable of producing over 16 million different colors. It isn't an IPS display which is a little disappointing, but sacrifices had to be made to keep this phone in the price range that it's in and the display still looks pretty good to me. The forehead and chin of this phone are a bit large, but the speaker grills help break it up a little, making it look a little bit better. Audio is also very important for media consumption with today's smartphones, and this is where I ran into a little bit of a problem with the Nexus 5X. Do not be fooled by the two speaker grills on this phone. There's only one speaker on the top of the phone, and the grill on the bottom, as far as I know, is just for aesthetics. The single top speaker is nothing special, it doesn't get too loud, there isn't much on the low end, and the sound gets distorted when it's turned up too high, but that is what we have to come to expect for cell phone speakers, I guess, especially on a budget phone. I feel like LG was trying to trick us a little bit by having a grill on the top and bottom, but it does make it look more symmetrical, and at least the one speaker the 5X does have is front facing and not facing the wrong direction. So finally, the camera. The 5X has a 12.3 megapixel rear shooter capable of 4K recording at 30fps and a front facing 5 megapixel camera. Here are some sample photos. The quality of the picture surprised me to be perfectly honest, and the 4K video also turned out pretty good. The autofocus worked well, but it was not as good as I was expecting considering there is a laser on the back that is supposed to calculate the distance of the subject and focus accordingly. So that brings me to my final judgment of this phone. If the future of Android budget phones is anything like the Nexus 5X, I will be a very happy camper. Obviously LG had to cut a couple of corners like the 1080p LCD screen and the single front facing speaker, but those are expected to keep the price down. And I had to remind myself while using this phone that it only costed $380. When I would show my friends, they couldn't believe that that was the price either. So if you're in the market for a budget Android phone, the Nexus 5X absolutely gets my recommendation. Thank you for watching, subscribe to see more content, and as always, stay classy.